Hello everyone. Today we're looking at one of these. Uh, this is another one of uh, a whole bunch of uh, Nokia bag phones that I own. Um, these aren't uh, too common nowadays. Certainly um, uh, Nokia bag phones that operate on amps um, I think are pretty rare. Partly because Motorola ruled the market when, uh, when it comes to amps. Uh, Motorola are, are, are pioneers when it came to AMPS technology and uh, certainly Nokia um, wasn't really um, at the forefront of, of um, cell phones when it comes to AMPS. When it, when it came to ETAX and, and other technologies, Nokia was definitely at the forefront in the middle, you know, mid to late 90s, definitely. They, you know, they were real big. Um, but um, with, with AMPS, uh, you, you don't see too many of these. And, and this is actually one of only a couple uh, one of only a few, I should say, uh, uh, bag phones like this that, that I own from Nokia that has the uh, the, the leather the leather bags. Um, or, uh, most of the Nokia uh, transportable bag phones that I have like this um, uh, that are in a sort of bag like this uh, are, uh, are are in a bag, but but it ain't leather, uh, and and this is genuine leather. Um, so I, I guess this must have been an exec model of some sort. Uh, this is a Nokia C16. Um, so check out some of the other videos um, that I have, um, uh, with, you know, about some of the other bag phones. Um, this this operated on amps, uh, and like I said, I think this came out um, sort of mid to late '90s. Some of the other ones that, that some of the other bag phones that I have uh, that I've got videos of, um, I think they were earlier than this. I think this one, um, going by the, the the keypad layout and and part of the menu. Um, it is probably 1996 I would say that this came out um, and the reason I say that is because in Europe at the time um, the Nokia released a, a couple of phones a whole bunch of phones um, primarily of interest though are two different models which were pioneers um, or, or which were um, groundbreaking at the time the first one was this this is a Nokia 9000 um, and, um, and, and, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because the C16, which is this here, um, the, this was the, this is one of the few bag phones that, that I am aware of that has the, the new shape, uh, type buttons. If you look at all the other, the other, uh, bag phones from Nokia, the, the, the buttons are kind of very different. Uh, the, the buttons are very similar to some of the Motorola Microtax with your store, um, clear and and recall buttons and your your, your volume buttons um, and I guess Motorola changed the the, the design slightly because uh, you didn't get a store and recall button anymore you got a clear button and you got a memory button and a menu button um, a bit like this uh, uh, this was the menu button this was the uh, memory button sorry menu memory and you got the up and down the clear uh, and the alpha and obviously the dial buttons um, so I, I do think that um, around about that sort of time um, they changed the button layout slightly and and they, and they made this and, and this is the same as the, the sort of layout of, of the 2110i which is what this is um, and they had, they had a whole bunch of these uh, in various permutations um, if you get one of these phones um, it may or may not be GSM it could be ETAX no it couldn't be ETAX so they never made an ETAX version of this but it could be NMT it could be uh, uh, it could be GSM 1900 as well. There's a few of these, like the 2190, which looks exactly like this, but it, 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 it's a GSM 1900 phone, not a 900, GSM 900 like this is. But anyway, um, so I, my point is that, that I think they changed the button layout to, to make it more uh, more uh, more original. Um, certainly this one is, is pretty heavy, actually, uh, and this doesn't have a battery in it. Um, you can definitely put a battery in it because... When you unzip this, it's definitely got a battery holder, but you also get the car socket. Uh, the battery holder is th is, um, is this little thing here with the Velcro. Um, it's not got a battery in it, but um, definitely um, you can definitely get one. So let, let's fire this one up and um, see what we can do with it. Certainly, um, the, these ones, like I said, are, are are pretty rare. You don't see many of these floating around. Um, it, it's got the um, the, the the original uh, Nokia um, antenna. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's got the Nokia written there. 
Um, and actually, the antenna is in remarkable shape compared to the rest of the, um, the, the, the bag. I think actually the guy replaced the antenna before selling it off because the bag actually looks like it's, it's, been, it's, it's taken a beating. The bag really looks like it's taken a beating, but the antenna is in pretty good shape. So, um, right, let's fire this one up. Um, this has quite a long cord, actually, believe it or not. This is significantly in, in, in length. So, um, presumably, you had this on the footwell and on, on the passenger seat, and the, the cord was long enough for you to reach right over. So, let's power this one on. And... Um, Hopefully it ain't going to ask for a pin. Right, that's what you got. Uh, I'm guessing that's the number it was assigned to. Uh, so quickly going through the menu. The menu in, in some of these Nokia bag phones is, is you get a menu A and a menu B. Menu A is the more common stuff. Menu B is the not so common stuff that you might not use on a day to day basis. Uh, like your pin or, or like a few other functions that you, you probably wouldn't access. So they, they guess they, they, they made the menu quite easy to, 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 to access. So um, press in uh, menu, menu again, uh, and then you get menu B. Let's go into that. So you got a pin. Um, in fact, let me turn down the volume because this is seriously loud. Um, so for example, this is ketone let's change that let's change that to medium because um, certainly that last tone uh, was really loud so um, get out of that so back to menu um, menu B actually let's just go into menu A quick so menu A DTMF continuous uh, no order answer backlight on Ketone medium, we've just changed. Ring volume very loud. One minute alert. System select. So you got a choice of home, auto, preferred, uh, non-preferred, uh, and that's it. So let's leave that on auto. Not that it matters because this operates on amps and they shut off amps, sell towers quite some time ago, um, probably about 10, 12 years ago, uh, maybe even longer depending where you are. So... Um, Let's change that back to auto. Um, power high. These are all three watt units. Um, and that's about it, really. That's all you got. Uh, going into menu B, um, you got pin, you got next menu, English, you got obviously a language selection. Uh, one touch on, alarm, redial, ignition sense. Horn alert. Now I've worked out what this is. Um, you can actually, if the if there was an incoming call, you can actually get this to um, to, to fire off the car horn, um, um, which is a pretty neat function, I guess, um, at the time, but um, probably not not commonly used nowadays because generally phones aren't as big as this, and you'd have it in your shirt pocket. Uh, data link. I don't know what that is. The last counter, last call counter, and that's pretty much it. There, there really isn't much in the menu in these. Um, pretty, pretty basic, like I said, um, and um, quite chunky for, for its time. I mean, this was state of the art at one point or other. So um, people paid a, a, a small premium to, to have this. If you think nowadays, you know, the smartphones and your iPhones and all that junk, um, you know, um, compare that to, to one of these, and uh, you're talking serious, serious money and serious weight to carry around. So. Um, there's not really much else I can show you. Um, it's got a, a selection button and, and you can change the volume with this on the side. Obviously that means high volume. If you press it again, you get low volume. You can just cycle through that. Um, uh, and, and, and that's about it. Like I said, um, I will just quickly show you what you get in the bag in the bag itself. So you get the handset, you got a little hole where the cable goes into. Um, you got the antenna. Uh, which I actually will need to undo and these are always a pain to get off because they're screwed real tight um, which doesn't make it easy at all to take the contents of the bag out um, and that's actually real hard to, 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 to undo um, I don't think I can get that off actually is that that's, that's not going to give way, is it? That's quite a tough little sucker. Oh, here we go. Um, 
So yeah, like I said, the antenna is original and it's in darn good shape given that the, uh, the case isn't in as good a shape as the antenna. So quickly unzip that and show you the inside. Um, now, this one's a little different from the others, but it is still a C250, I think, as far as I can tell. You got two connectors, that's power, and the other one is the handset. So your handset would plug into here, the power would go into here. This is for your speaker and your auxiliary uh, speaker, uh, sorry, your mic and your speaker, and that's obviously the antenna port. Um, does it say what model this is? Um, yes, it does. It says it right at the bottom there. I don't know if this will focus. C250 Mark II. Um, this isn't obviously a C50. It's a C16. But what Nokia did at the time, they were pretty clever. Um, they made a generic box like this, or base unit like this, and uh, they just changed the handset on them. And uh, hey, presto, they, they brought out new models. They, they brought out a whole bunch of new models. Um, and and, and the, the base unit, uh, this, this base unit was, was generic across their entire range of, uh, of, of bag phones like this. So um, if you look at the other videos that I made uh, with, with regards to the bag phones, you'll see that actually it's, it's, just, it's the same unit. Um, so that's pretty much all you got. Um, you, you got the bag and, and there isn't anything else in here to show you really. Um, apart from this little thing, which obviously is, is like the suction cup for the uh, for the receiver. And, and this one's pretty filthy actually. Maybe I should have cleaned it before doing the video, but hey ho. Um, so, and that's what you got when you bought one of these. Certainly this is probably the, um, the exact model. Uh, you got a nice little pocket here to, to put the manual or some paperwork in there. And uh, you got a, a little thing up here which, which held the, uh, the pen together. And, and that was that really. Um, you could carry your paperwork and important documents. Um, and, and you got a, a nice little shoulder strap like this to, to carry this thing around. Um, uh, and that's about it really um, like I said it's a shame we can't get service on on on, uh, on these I'd love to get service on on some of these uh, I really would um, but unfortunately the technology is defunct and it's no longer with us so um, these are good for collecting uh, collecting or as part of a collection collecting uh, and that's about it really um, so but uh, feel free to check out some of the other videos I have on uh, on here. And uh, if you like the phone, uh, give me a thumbs up. Much appreciated. And uh, like I said, uh, don't uh, forget to uh, like, share and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.